All right, we got it. Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Tuesday, Thursday. Where am I? <laughs> good afternoon, good morning, good evening. <laughs> All over the world, we're so thankful for your presence. Come on in. Let's get moving. I know that we're... Uh, trying to get moving to many places and get many things done, but we are thankful and appreciative for your presence. <laughs> I am so, 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 so gr glad and grateful for the opportunity to speak to you this morning and to greet you. Good morning. <laughs> I'm working on a new tool. Y'all are going to be so excited next week when I get my new tool and I can be able to see from afar. I got some surprises and some gadgets coming. Good morning to you. Wonderful to have you, Prophet Stephen Gibson. I got your note. I'm coming, coming, coming. Going to call you soon. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Lord, she said, precious. It is Thursday, right? <laughs> Good morning to you from Houston. Wonderful to have you. Wonderful. Good morning, Simone. How are you, precious blessing? Wonderful mover, shaker of God. So glad to have you all. Y'all know I'm, 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 I got several problems. These are my problems, but they're going to be all right. I got, I got terrible eyes and crooked teeth, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> we gonna do what we supposed to do anyway. Then no matter what our fa our faults and foibles are, God can still use us, right? No matter what has befallen us, no matter what are our issues, we can keep it going. And that is our message on the seven mountains. And I'm Yolanda Powell, squ what, squinting and crooked or whatever. I'm here. <laughs> and I am here to deliver the message of God. I'm here to deliver the heart, I believe of our Father. I thank God for what he is doing and what he is sharing. Uh, it looks like my lighting is a little off, so I want to make sure that we got great lighting. Let me move some things around. Lighting is critical for any time we do anything for God. <laughs> Whatever we're going to do for God, we need good lighting. Amen. So I'll make sure my lighting is straight and things are right. All right. I think I might, okay, I think I can probably make it um, on Facebook Live with the lighting I have, but Periscope's a little dark. I'm so sorry about that. All right, so we're just going to see if we can keep this going anyway. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. I have said hello to a few people. Oh, my God, Micheline, prophetess from Atlanta. Good to have you on for a few minutes. I know. Just come back later and visit me a little bit later, and we'll, we'll chat that way. All right, good, good. Hello, hello to you as well. Good to have you on, Lord. I'm straining. <laughs> Let's go. Father, we bless you for this Thursday. It is a, a marvelous Thursday. It is a day of new beginnings. It is a time, Lord God, of movement into a new month. So much has happened in this year, but God, we're getting greater, greater, and greater in our understanding despite everything. So on this 1st of December, on this wonderful, marvelous Thursday, we thank you, Lord God, that you are yet speaking to your people, that you are yet moving among, Lord God, your children, that you are yet doing the things that you have said you would do because you are a God that cannot lie. You are a God that does not hold your tongue. When you are ready to speak, you will speak through a prophet. When you are ready to minister, you will minister to those with a prophetic ear. When you are ready to move, you are ready and nothing can stop the voice, the voice of God in the nations. And so we bless you, Papa. We bless you, Abba. We bless you, Father, from the four corners of the earth. We bless you across quarters and continents. We bless you through Christos anointing that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are not in any way perplexed. We are not in any way contorted. We are not in any scope trying to figure you out because you make your will known through the prophets. You say whatever I want to do, I'm going to talk to me some prophets. I I'm going to speak to me some people who know how to hear my voice and another voice not follow. So God, we thank you. We honor the prophets. We honor the prophetic. We honor the hearing ear. Ah, Nebasha, we 
Honor those that have an ear to hear what you are saying in the nations, what you are saying in families, what you are saying in the mountains, what you're saying to governments, what you're saying, Lord God, to religious institutions, what you're saying to education, what you are saying, God, to media, what you are saying to arts and entertainment on seven mountains and through seven spheres and through seven moves, you will speak in 2017. So we are getting ourselves ready. We are getting our government mental ear ready that we can hear what you're going to say to the nations through us. And we bless you and thank you this morning in the wonderful and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Jesus, the Christos, the one that was and is and is to come. There is no other. So we seal everything in his name and based on his testimony and his Testament. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to get right started. I know we're closer to 7.30, uh, so I'm going to move very expeditiously this morning. I do have something that I have been meditating on and that I've been really working through uh, in my understanding of this call to prophets, this call to those who are not just ordinary, regular beginning prophets, but those who have a governmental mantle because we are calling you. Apostles are calling for your positioning and your posturing in this season. So what God has asked us to do is to begin to just develop a few things, pulsate some things and, and cause there to be a new massaging on the governmental mantle so that we can get ready for a brand new year. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, come on, say, I'm all right. Say, I'm ready and I'm right. Come on here. I know what God is saying to me and I know this is you. I know who you are and I know God has been speaking. So we're just going to add a few things and round out a few things today on the governmental aspect of prophets. I'm not talking about those that have prophetic gifts. I'm not talking about those who have prophecy. I'm talking to the office of the prophet. I'm talking to those that have a governmental mantle on that office and have a press in their belly to understand what is all this stuff that I'm getting? What is all this stuff that I'm hearing God and that we can begin to understand. And so what God said to me, uh, that the, the governmental prophets, if we look at Samuel, which we're going to do briefly this morning, and we understand Samuel's maturation, we understand Samuel's development, then we'll know a little bit about governmental prophets in this day and age. In other words, God does not hide his training. He does not hide his instruction. He does not hide his mandates from us in this season. We have a book. We have a manual. We have instruction that is written. So let it be written. So let it be done. Right. And so God in first Samuel chapter three, begin to tell us what he's after. And so God said to me, he said, when you speak to the prophets, you ask them the question. And I'm not talking about just any kind of prophets. I'm not talking about those who just exhort and those who edify and comfort. I'm talking about those who walk in the office and with the mantle to judge and to warn, oh, to develop systems and to shift out status quo and bring in the new mind of God, the new operation operating systems of the kingdom. All right. So that's a little different. So the question that he said to ask you uh, this morning was, where is your hat? Do you have your hat on? Do you understand the hat that God always positions governmental prophets with? And it's a very basic thing. It's just, it's just a hat, it, but it's more than that. It, it definitely is something I want to explain, something I want to show you from scripture, something I want to give biblical foundation to you so that you can walk in this thing and have your hat on. <laughs> Say hashtag, I got my hat. Come on, hashtag, my hat on. I got my hat on, all right? And so with the hat, God began to show me in scripture several things. So I'm going to read from, from 1 Samuel chapter 3, and then we will, uh, will we just probably three, let me see what I'm going to do here. Let me, let me not, let me not move too fast. I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 3, just verses 8 through 10. 
And what I want to do before that is just explain that, that, that if we're building on a foundation of understanding in the seven mountain scope. Uh, and, and again, um, here in Washington, D.C., where I am heralding from, I have a complete desire to understand how the prophetic interfaces with the governmental. I am looking to see from scripture with those, with a, as a woman, as a female son, <laughs> with, a, with an apostolic mindset and, and call, I want to understand how scripture brings us to present day. I want to understand and I want to bring you into my discourse and discussion with God about how we are to mobilize, activate, and then mobilize, and then release upon the seven mountains governmental prophets in this next season. Oh, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. And so Samuel becomes the first prophet of this. We had this governmental mantle on in the way that I believe God is speaking to us. Now, there were many. Moses was, of course, a prophet and an apostolic, you know, apostle and prophet. So we can look at Moses. But I believe that Samuel in this season has the pieces we need so that when we understand putting on our hat and where is our hat, and what is this hat? The best person to help us understand that is Samuel. All right. And so here in the in the scriptures, uh, we're looking at first Samuel. And this is what it says. It says, see, I'm going to read it and then I'll backtrack a little bit. It says here in first Samuel chapter three, it says, now Samuel, I'm starting at verse seven. I said eight, but I'm going to go seven. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the, the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So previously he's been calling him Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel does not know. And, and, and many of the biblical scholars tell us he's not even a grown man. He's about 12 years old. He has come to the temple uh, about after weaning about three, maybe four, if he, depending on the time of the, of the mothers and their, and their milk and how she was, how Hannah was dealing with him. So she gets to him to the temple and she gives him as he promised, she promised God, I'm going to give you my son. I'm going to give him that. So, but he does not know now how to hear God, but he's been in the temple about uh, seven years, maybe. If he got there about three or four and he's now about 12, then we know that he's been there a good bit of time under Eli's instruction or under religious instruction. I want to make that clear. He's been under Eli's instruction or religious instruction. So it says again that he did not know how the word of the Lord came. He didn't understand how those things went. And it says in verse 8, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli. He went to his pastor. He went to his bishop. He said, Bishop, here am I, for thou didst call me, right? And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child because he had come so many times asking Eli if he uh, knew, had called him. And Eli said, no, nah, I ain't call you. <laughs> Remember, religion don't call prophets. All right, that's just a note. Religion never called prophets, so don't be asking, did you call me? No. <laughs> Eli will always tell you, no, I ain't know nothing about that. <laughs> so it goes on and it says, finally, duh, Eli gets it. Hmm, maybe the Lord is calling this child. Okay, Eli, uh, Eli, 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 Eli don't know. Eli only doing routine religion. He's doing only routine religion. Only routine religion. Don't you ever forget it. So even though he's doing routine religion, he finally gets an epiphany. He finally gets a eureka. Oh, maybe the Lord is calling you, Samuel. So the prophets have to hear <laughs> from Eli that yeah, maybe it is the Lord. Maybe you need to go to the Lord about that because I, I, I don't know. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go, lie down, and it shall be if he calls you, then you shall say, speak, Lord, for thy servant he is. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And verse 10 says, and the Lord came and stood and called yet another time, Samuel, Samuel. And then the Lord, and, and Samuel heard the Lord clearly now for the first time. And he said, speak Lord for your servant hears. 
And I want to share with you today, I want to share with you the first part of the hat is H, the ability to hear your name. The ability to hear God Almighty call your name, not somebody else's, not somebody you train with, not somebody who has the oversight, not somebody who parented. You and I, if we are called to governmental mantles, must know clearly the H of the hat, which God will call us and we must hear our name, not the assignment yet, not the word yet. Do you hear your name? Your name becomes critical because God wants to identify that he is not calling you out of what you was in. <laughs> He's not calling you because of your parents. He's not calling you because of your denomination. He's not calling you because of your tribal affiliation. He's not calling you because of your association with Eli and religion. He is calling you intimately and he is calling you doubly by your name. Samuel, Samuel, Meaning, I have groomed you for this. I knew you before your mama's belly. I knew you in your mama's belly. And I put you in your mama's belly. So I need to know first governmental prophet, if you can hear my voice, call your name. Can you hear the name that is your name come out of God's mouth? Now we cooking with gas. Now we can get something done. I didn't say, did you hear him say, oh, I didn't say tongues. I didn't say, did you hear him say, thou shalt be? No, did you hear your name? Because if you didn't hear your name, then you need to keep sitting down. You need to hear your name. He needs to, it needs to be so intimate. It needs to be so clear that God called me. He called me. He, he called, he wants me. See, because if you hear your name, then when you get moving in this process, ain't nobody else going to impress you. Ain't nobody else going to move you. Because I didn't get called by you. I didn't get called by you. So I'm not responding to you. I, I don't move based on what you, <laughs> you say. I don't move based on how you sound. I don't move based on whether you like me or not. I don't, I'm talking governmental prophets. We don't move by what, what, what men say and whether folk like us. We don't care. I heard God say, Samuel, Samuel. And that's what I responded to. I mean, God is in my name. <laughs> We ain't going there today, but there's a reason why God, E-L, is in Samuel's name. I ain't got time today. We got to move. All right, so we'll come to that another time. So he calls Samuel name. First part of the H, do you have your hat on? Where is your hat? Is did you hear your name? Second part, and it's right here in the text. Let's keep on going. Verse uh, 11 says, and the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. What I'm getting ready to do is going to upset the status quo. He says, in that day, I will perform against, say hashtag against. When God is speaking governmentally, when God is speaking prophetically by governmental mantle, you're going to hear against. It's going to be one of the critical words uh, in what is the assignment of God. And he says, I'm going to, I'm going to move against all what, it, what, what Eli and all things which I have spoken concerning his house. So God's to the governmental prophet is going to give an against word, an against word. He's going to establish something, but he's going to have to speak again. So we can't be stirred. We can't be shaken in our boots. Come on. Ramoshe, do you hear me? It's going to be an against word. Come on here, hashtag against word. It's going to be against. It's not going to be something to pander. It's not going to be something to pump. It's not going to be something to, to, to make to polish. He's going to speak against it. And he says this even further. He says, and when I begin this process, I will also make an end of it. Oh, Lord. When I begin 
to move this process, governmental prophet Samuel, he says, I want you to know, prophet, you ain't going to see nothing standing when I get through. When the word comes out of your mouth to, to, to speak for me, that word is going to bring a complete destruction to governmental systems. So it's critical that you hear accurately what I'm saying and that you don't get in your feelings, even though you have been trained under Eli. Even though Eli has blessed your mama and your daddy, even though you've been in the church all these years, oh Lord, and, and you know you love Eli, and Eli was, is, he's an aged man now, and you just respect him real good, it ain't, it, God said no, no, I'm getting ready to come against Eli, I'm getting ready to come against Eli's house, I'm getting ready to do something so that every ear will hear it, and tingle because of it. And when I finish, it won't be no more standing. It will be an end to what has been going on in this religious system. So don't be scared, governmental prophet, because when you hear your name, the next thing you're going to hear and you must hear is the against. Oh, You have your name, you hear your name, and you hear the assignment against. There is going to be an against assignment. You've got to understand that. The last thing that's going to happen, and I've got to move quickly because I know you got work and you got other things, but here's the deal. Once you get your hat on, you get your hat on. I heard my name, so I'm not, I have no allegiance to anybody else. I heard God clearly give me an against assignment, which is I'm not exhorting. I ain't confident and I ain't trying to fix it and make it sweet. I have brought an against word because in order for God's kingdom to prevail in the earth, we've got to do an against prophetic move. All right. So that's part of the half. And then it goes on and it goes down a little bit. And Samuel hears the full counsel. I don't have time. He Maybe just a little bit more of 13. He says, well, I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity, which he knows. Now he knows it, but he hasn't dealt with it. And so, because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not, I'm getting ready to tear this whole system of religion down. They will not be able to carry out their duties. They will not be able to front and, and look cute. They will not be able to put their little stuff on and all of their little stuff and look good. And in the back, folk be doing everything they want to do. He said, that day is coming to an end and I'm going to speak to it very clearly, I'm going to speak to the iniquity and to the vile. All right. I'm, I'm smiling, but I ain't playing with y'all. This is serious stuff. And he says in 14, and therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of his house shall not only be purged, it shall not be purged with sacrifices nor offerings forever. In other words, you are not going to be clean because of your religious acts. The, no no religious acts are going to cover you. No more religious purging. No more sacrifices. No more offerings is going to stop me from what I'm getting ready to do. I am getting ready to tear this whole Eli system down. I'm getting ready to tear this whole religious system down. I'm getting ready to tear this thing all the way. And it's coming through the mouth of my prophet. When I speak out, when he speaks it out of his mouth, therefore begins the judgment. Therefore begins the harshness. Therefore begins the destruction. So listen, when, you, when God calls you, you put on your hat. Because he's going to call your name H. He's going to call your name. So you got to hear your name. Hashtag, hear my name. Second thing he's going to do is he's going to give you an against assignment. Hashtag, against assignment. It's not going to be for nobody's upbuilding. It's going to be for the tearing down of something that's critical. When prophets, governmental prophets speak, they're going to speak to the heart of the matter, to the mind of the matter, and to the systems of the matter. In other words, we're not trying to always build sometimes when it's governmental and God is sick and tired of being sick and tired. He raises up a Samuel and he calls him two times because he's doubling the anointing. He's doubling the assignment. He's doubling the authority. He's doubling the move. And then he knows what he's getting ready to put in his mouth. He's getting ready to put his name in his ear, 
His name is in his ear, but his assignment is in his mouth. Once he puts his assignment in his mouth, he's going to do the T and he's going to do this very critically. It says that after Samuel got, got, got out of the position of, of God's hearing and out of what God gave him in the against word, Eli comes in and he says to Eli, he says to Samuel, what, what, what did God say? What, what did God say about, about, about anything? And so Samuel is just trying to be, you know, he's a child. He's about 12. This man is a grown man. And he stands there for a minute. And all of a sudden, Eli says, just give it to me straight. Just, just tell me what he said. He knows there's a prophet in his house. He knows there's a prophet come from God. He knows exactly what time it is. And so when we deal with governmental prophets, when we deal with governmental prophets, y'all, we're dealing with a T. We're dealing with timed tenacity. Time tenacity. It means this word is not for future. This word is not down the road. This is not for, this is right here and right now. Governmental prophets when God calls your name when he puts an against assignment in your in your mouth he's also putting a timed word well let me change that because the against assignment is in your belly I need to change that I need to shift that because I just saw it in my spirit the, the against assignment is in your belly you can't you've already ate it you've already swallowed it it's already been ingested it's already been digested because the ear of the prophet is connected to his belly let me say that let me get this clear the ear of the prophet is connected to his belly first. It has to be in your belly, the word of God. Then the timing of it, the timing release of it comes out of your mouth. So it's a channel that moves from your ear to your belly or to your mouth. It goes in, it goes down, it comes up. Say that with me. It goes in, it goes down, it comes up and out. That is the way governmental prophetic moves. It has to be in the ear. You got to hear your name. The assignment, the against assignment goes very deep with accuracy down into your belly where the kingdom of God is. And then it comes up out of the kingdom scepter, out of the royal diadem of God, out of the ruling potentate of the king, and it comes like a laser sword, like a gavel, like a judgment out of the mouth of the governmental prophet. And so that's what happens when, when Eli says, okay, I'm ready. What Samuel at 12 does is he gives a judgment a judgment against religious systems of Israel, against all the boys and against what the sons have done, against all the violence and the iniquity, and Samuel speaks it. And when Samuel speaks it out of his mouth, therefore the wind of God, the judgment of God comes out of the mouth of the prophet. And all of a sudden now timed tenacity is in upon Samuel, but the timing of God is released out of his mouth upon Eli and his entire house. It's going to be, it's going to be dated now, not many days. It's going to be dated now, not, 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 not any years. It's going to be dated now, not many months that this word is going to to come to pass. And so I want you to know that God said, you need to get your hat on. You need to make sure that you're wearing your hat. You need to make sure that you're hearing what he is saying. First of all, you hear your name. Second of all, you hear, oh my God, the against assignment that he is releasing to your belly. And the third thing is you ain't scared of Eli. Come on here. I don't care how much you love him. I don't care how much he's instructed you. I don't care if he's your, your, your mama's pastor for 40 years. I don't care if the government of, of God, Iman Shah, and all of the pieces of the government, of, of, of religious government, has been in you and you've been in it and you've been there in that place. When God separates you, he separated you from your mama's belly. He didn't just separate you when you heard the word. He brought you into fruition. He brought you into germination. He brought you into manifestation for his own use. You do not get to play with this. You do not get to be somebody's friend and somebody's member and somebody's, oh, I can't say it. You got to hear your name. You got to understand the against. And you got to speak with time tenacity. You got to open your mouth and let the judgment of God come out. Now, this is, this is not easy. This is not, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying God only has a few good men 
<laughs> and good women who can do this. And if you be one, then it's your time to get ready. Don't you get scared. Don't you back up. And don't you take down. All right. Well, that's it. I mean, it's just that simple. Go to go to First Samuel chapter three. Read it. Get it in your belly. Go through the notes again and put on your hat. Where is your hat? Where is it, prophet? Where is it, governmental prophet? It is the mantle of God to have your head covered by the praise and the precision and the power of of the most high God. And when you have that hat on, hey, I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody do. And I don't care what nobody don't like. God is ready to use you. And it's your season to hear your name. Get the against assignment in your belly. And open up your mouth. And speak with timed tenacity the thing he says. I love you. I am praying for you. Pray for me because <laughs> I have many enemies and many adversaries, but I ain't scared because I got my hat on. All right. Blessings. Have a great Thursday. I will be back with you for a few more things this weekend that I feel like God wants me to do. We might do something really late. I have some people coming in that's going to be doing uh, the psychology of the kingdom. I have actually apostle, um, oh Lord, Michelle Toussaint coming from Austin, Texas. She's going to be breaking down the psychology of the kingdom. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to definitely introduce uh, most of you to her this weekend. So be looking for uh, us to come on and share some of what we'll be talking about. It's going to be off the literal chain. We've got to get our mind connected to our spirit, lest we think we do God favor and we miss it in the end. All right. So blessings to you. Have a great day, a wonderful Thursday, a marvelous looking hat on. And I'll see you by your hat. I know you by your hat. And you know me by mine. All right. Blessings. Have a great day. Love you. And praying your shalom. At the same time, I'm praying for your power. In Jesus' name, amen. And blessings. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. Now I save y'all the last. Have a great day. Don't go out without your hat. Make sure you know what God is saying to you. Do what he say and don't you take down with Eli. I love you and I'm praying for you. See you this weekend. Bye-bye.